Bail is everything. More than 70 million Americans have an arrest or criminal record. Screws up finding a job, finding a house. They say you're rehabilitated. The world don't know that. I'm always going to be in a state of incarceration, even though I'm free. Searching for Justice, Life After Lockup, April 13th on NEPM. You're watching New England Public Media on WGBY Springfield. I travel around to so many places. The answer to climate change is communities everywhere creating more resilience in the natural world to rebalance the planet. That must be the key that can save us all. Watch Changing Planet April 20th or stream at nepm.org. Coming up tonight, we're connecting you with the Franklin County Village that's home to an eclectic array of artisans and businesses. Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. It feels like a little creative center that you can come into and bring your piece into because it's going to give something back to you. We'll grab a cup of joe and a side of local flavor at an iconic eatery. It's like Norm on Cheers. Everybody knows your name. You want to come in just uh, even if it's for a few minutes. And we'll explore the cultural side of this unique community. This town is an incredible place for an enduring goods market, a market where we are selling things that have already existed. Details on those stories and more as we go on the road to explore the creativity, culture, and community of Turner's Falls. Up next on Connecting Point. Support for Connecting Point is provided by our contributing viewers. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Connecting Point. I'm Saidalis Bauer. We're taking Connecting Point on the road tonight and coming to you from Turner's Falls, Massachusetts in the heart of Franklin County. The town, which many refer to as Great Falls, has a population of about 4,500 people, and one of them is local media personality and WRSI morning host, Monty Belmonte. A great champion of his adopted hometown, he was kind enough to take us on a tour to see some of the places and meet some of the people that make this Franklin County village so special to him. Monty brought us to several stops along the way, but began our tour at a place that he has a personal connection with, the Shea Theater. Well, welcome to my neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And let's make the most of this beautiful day, shall we? And I'll show you around the village of Turner's Falls, where I've lived for the last 18 years. It is a great town, and I love living here, and I love being on Avenue A. I'm also really involved in this beautiful theater that we're standing in front of right now, the Shea Theater, which is owned by the town of Montague and run by a nonprofit board of which I'm the president and directed by Linda Tardiff, who I'll introduce you to when we go inside the theater. Let me introduce you to our managing director, Linda Tardiff. Hello, Linda. Hey, Monty. Could you call me Mr. President? I will not. Okay. Uh, today. <laughs> can you tell us the brief history of the Shea? Well, it's lived a lot of lives since it opened in 1925 as a vaudeville house. Then it moved on to a movie house, and we actually have one of the original posters here from the Three Musketeers. Then in the 1970s, it was a Renaissance community. A commune. A commune. Yes, taking over this building and using it as their kind of center of activity and worship and what. And whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then it moved into a community theater, and then it comes to us starting in 2015. Will you show us a little bit around the theater? Come on, let's go. All right, Linda, what are we checking out here? Well, tonight is a really cool night because we have Grammy-nominated all-female folk group Della May in the house tonight. What else is coming up? All kinds of stuff. We have Amy Helm coming in April. We have a local all-day music festival called Mud Season, the Adam Ezra Group. There's so much coming up. But it's not just music. There's also theater and other things as well. There's free movie nights. I mean, I am part of the theater, so I, I know what's going on in it. That's kind of part of the overall vision of what we do. But we couldn't do it without you, Linda Tardiff. Thanks, Monty. But we sure will try. No, I'm just kidding. I love her. Uh, 
Coming up, I will take you to the store that has created the last two years worth of the strange outfits I've worn on this thing called the March for the Food Bank that you might have heard of. And it's all made out of amazing repurposed fabric, some of it from Broadway. Let me introduce you to Katherine Greenwood Swanson from Swanson's Fabrics, plural and possessive, where all of the fabric in here is $4 a yard, no matter where it came from. It's sort of your vision of being trash rich. And some of this fabric has come from very rich background. Can you talk about your vision here? Well, in fact, this piece actually here, hello, Monty. Hello. Um, is a piece that came from a Broadway costume designer who had too much fabric and needed a place for it to go that was not the landfill. So it came here. Another cool thing on this block is Buckingham Rabbit's Vintage, which is two doors over, where if, you know, maybe you aren't so adroit at making your own clothing yet, you can go over there and get other fantastic stuff. So this is sort of a block on Avenue A that's focusing on reclaiming fabric and clothing. This town is an incredible place for an enduring goods market, is what I call it. So a market where we are selling things that have already existed and are not being made new. Um, I think it's the most sustainable way you can possibly shop. One of the things that's beautiful about the town is that the river runs right down behind us. And one of the great resources in town is a small museum dedicated to celebrating the culture of the environment of the river. I feel so Mr. Rogersy going around my neighborhood, but I want to introduce you to my friend who is the visitor services supervisor here at the Great Falls Discovery Center, a free museum on Avenue A in Great Falls or Turner's Falls. What are some of the things that we learn about here? Well, you learn everything from the border of Canada and New Hampshire to Long Island Sound, all the different habitats. So everything from a salt marsh where you might see a muskrat in our dioramas to the, the floodplain forest where you might see the raccoons and the eagles. Um, each habitat tells a story of animals that are unique to that habitat. And the other thing that's really cool is you have a place where you can actually see all of the phases of the river yes. from industrialization to its habitat all in the back of the building here. Yes. Let's go check yes. it out. Okay. What's great about this canal is there's a three and a half mile bike path that, that connects from Unity Park all the way to the East Deerfield Rail Yard. It's a great walk. and. Also, it, it, it helps uh, remind us of the legacy of industrialization here, too. You can see old mill buildings. Some are still standing. Some are long gone. Some are falling apart. Well, we're really lucky, and I'm really lucky, because I live right down the street to have a great museum like this here, yeah. Janelle. Thank you for giving us a little oh, tour. Welcome. We could take the bike path, which is right outside this window, all the way down to the gateway to my neighborhood, which just happens to have an excellent brewery that I want to show you. Yeah called Brick and Feather. I've been showing you all around my neighborhood. You're literally at the entranceway to my neighborhood, the patch here in Turner's. Uh, and I do feel like Mr. Rogers, although I don't ever remember Mr. Rogers visiting a brewery. But I'm really lucky because I think this is one of the best breweries we have in the valley. And all my beer snob friends think so too. It's Brick and Feather Brewery with Lawrence George, who is the owner and the brewer. You make one of my, I think my favorite beer, this one here, the Sauron's Nightlight. Is there a beer that you feel like you're famous for? Like certain breweries are, they're famous for their IPA or what have you. We got on the map early for one of our IPAs in absentia, which you've had Love it. a bunch of times. Um, that was, you know, back in 2016 when people would show up and, and wait in line to buy growlers. And that was the thing that happened here for a while and obviously, um, now we put our beer in cans and now there's a lot more breweries so you don't have to go wait in line anymore But that's still our number one selling beer My gateway beer was it was this lager and it's still my favorite beer and if people are not into hops That's one that they're gonna go for it's, it's called, called a kitten really with a whip. You also have some of the coolest named beers Thank like, you, Monty. like I said Sauron's nightlight a little homage to Lord of the Rings and the most delicious uh, Dark beer porter or stout. It's a porter porter uh, that that I've had so I, I just live right around the corner so it's really easy for me to come get it, but um, it's one of the most amazing things about living here, right off Avenue A in Great Falls.
the largest of the five villages that make up the town of Montague. This former industrial town has, like so many others before it, looked in recent years to arts, culture, and a burgeoning small business scene as a way to bring new life to it. And that includes introducing high fashion to Avenue A. Love brought clothing designer Richie Richardson from New York City to the area, but its beauty, potential, and sense of community have kept him here. Splitting his time between the Big Apple and Turner's Falls, Richardson runs Fab Fashion Boutique on 2nd Street. He shared what he finds so special about the village that he calls his second home with executive producer Tony Dunn. What I have found in the four years that we've been here at Fab, so many new people have come to town, like I once was. And I've met many of these people. And what I've heard from them is that there is this buzz they've heard somewhere. And it, it, it inspires me because Turner's Falls is a tiny speck. I mean, downtown Turner's Falls uh, is one block, one square block. But there's something that is happening here, that is, there's a cultural, there's, a, there's a, a connecting, something that's bringing people here that they're sharing about. And it feels like a little creative center that you can come into and bring your peace into because it's going to give something back to you. Almost like a Thanksgiving, everybody comes to the table with something and then there's this wonderful feast with all of these different flavors because we all bring a different dish. And Turner's Falls feels like that to me, a wonderful amalgam of all of these things happening. We don't have a lot of diversity. I am the diversity in town. Um, I love that I'm the diversity in town because I shout a lot and, um, and I use myself as a sort of a cultural ambassador to constantly um, tell people what's possible here and to share with people my experiences here. We decided to introduce Fashion Week a few years ago. It was something that gravitated and people felt that this is an opportunity to bring the fashion focus here. And because I have a lot of friends in fashion, I was able to put the word out and bring them here to create the kind of Fashion Week in New England that becomes a major portal, a major hub that allows for diversity, allows for, for cultivating new ideas, new people, showing new works. So we are developing this. This will be the third year. And we really have this vision that we want this to be something that is owned by this region, particularly Franklin County. Something that gives us a sort of a name branding in terms of fashion, something that impacts the tourism, something that impacts community, something that brings people together, something that allows for new and emerging creatives to show their work. So the platform, the, the architecture that we are setting in place is to give recognition for all of these parts and like the, the, the same analogy I use with the Thanksgiving, it's all of those pieces that come together that are able to share with the entire community. Going to New York, I am very excited. When I'm coming back here, I'm very excited. Because what here allows me, it here allows me the opportunity to practice the, the kind of things that I can practice in a space that only allows for that here. So I'm a yogi. I run, I, all the things that I need to do with nature allows for that here. Every Friday night, Connecting Point explores the creativity, culture, and community that make us Western New England, but it doesn't stop there. You can find us online anytime for exclusive features and content. And in this week's digital exclusive, we hit the town for some retail therapy. The village of Turner's Falls has some of the most unique shopping in Western Massachusetts. Much of what is sold downtown is one of a kind or locally sourced or made. And one of those retailers who led the charge of this small business revolution are the owners of Loot, Found and Made, who take the old and make it new again for someone else. And you'll find a lot of stuff in the shop that is cool, but the question is, what do you do with it? And we rely on our customers to figure out what to do with it. And we get a lot of feedback and a lot of 
interesting ideas that come from our customers. Don't miss this digital exclusive available online right now at nepm.org slash connecting point. Many of the artists living and working in Turner's Falls have deep ties to Western Massachusetts. Although she was born in Michigan, Jess Marsh Wissaman not only found her passion for creating hand-painted signs here, but says she couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Her company, Hired Hand Signs, is bringing back the personalized touch of handmade signs and gold leaf lettering to businesses across the Pioneer Valley. Connecting Point's Ross Lipman brings us to her studio on 3rd Avenue to see how her handcrafted signs are made. People definitely pause when I say I'm a sign painter. Um, alternatively, I sometimes say I'm an artist who paints signs, and for a lot of people that makes more sense. Um, because as a trade, sign painting has mostly died at this point. It's mostly faded away. My interest in learning about um, gold leaf signage, basically it, it is the pinnacle of the sign painting world. Like it's the, it's the practice that I think all sign painters kind of, you know, work toward perfecting because it is really difficult. Right here in town, we have the Five-Eyed Fox restaurant. I gilded their windows. Loot on Avenue A, I did their logo in gold leaf and painted their raccoon character on the door. I feel really lucky that I found this interest and decided to pursue it because um, Western Massachusetts is really the perfect area to be a sign painter, I think. There's sort of an aversion to things that are mass produced. People are really interested in making things here. There's a lot of artists here, and so this is the perfect place to make artist-made signs. My family farm is Warner Farm in Sunderland, and we are uh, mostly known as the home of Mike's Maze. And I happen to inherit the job of designing Mike's Maze for our family farm. And so in 2015, I made my first corn maze, and um, we posted the picture of it uh, one evening and the next day we woke up and found out it was on the front page of Reddit and it had gone viral. <laughs> and I got kind of hooked on it, you know, it was really exciting um, that so many people responded to my artwork that was carved into a cornfield. I just am so interested in having a, a blank slate and figuring out how to bring life to it with art. And so murals or signs, um, Either, either or, they're both really fun for me to work on. When Turner's Falls resident Chuck Garbio purchased the Shady Glen Diner in 2012, it was certainly a local boy makes good type of story. But recreating the success this eatery had enjoyed for over 40 years would be a steep hill to climb as the restaurant had gone through three different owners in the last 10 years before he bought it. One decade later, and this once proud diner that appeared to be on its last legs has once again become, like the song says, a place where everyone knows your name. Connecting Point's Brian Sullivan dropped by the Shady Glen for a hot cup of joe and a side of some local flavor. Is there ever a time that a cup of coffee is more than just a cup of coffee? Well, to ask most coffee drinkers, they'll say that every cup is special. But there are those times when it's just a little more special. Maybe it's the first one of the day, or during breakfast with a loved one. Maybe it's during a get-together with friends as they try to solve the world's problems, share a few laughs, and do it all before the sun is all the way up. The four of us are um, good friends. Um, we met coming in here, and it just started every morning. We'll be here at 8 o'clock in the morning for our coffee. The here in question is a place known as the Shady Glen Diner in Turner's Falls. Folks crossing the Turner's Falls Gill Bridge can find it almost immediately on the left at the corner of 1st Street and Avenue A. In these times where decorum often supersedes content, what stands out most about the Shady Glen is its simplicity. That and the larger-than-life presence of owner Chuck Garbeel behind the counter. Not only does he look like a pro wrestler, he's got the pictures on the wall showing he's not one to be trifled with. But the customers who know him aren't exactly shaking in their boots. I think he's a hoot. <laughs> he's, he's a nice guy. And I think he cares, um, you know, about other people. He's a selectman up in Gill now. So that shows that he's involved. 
While making sure the food gets to the customers hot and fast from the griddle may be priority number one around here, giving customers at the Shady Glen the feeling that they're in a special club whenever they're here is a close second. I've got regulars that have been coming since day one, and, and whatever topic you want to pick, religion, politics, health, whatever, we, we've agreed, disagreed, totally disagreed, totally agreed, and, but it's just, you're right, people come in certain times, certain time of the day, they know whoever else is going to be here at that time, so they know it's going to be like a fun time or a hot topic or whatever, and uh, so they just, the regulars just come, it's like clockwork, I know what time of day it is by who's showing up. <laughs> Garbiel may be a fixture here now, but it almost didn't come to pass. Before purchasing the diner in 2012, his sights were set on buying the local pizza place where he'd worked for several years. When that deal fell through, the Shady Glen became available. The year 2022 makes it 10 straight years, where hardly a day has gone by that Chuck wasn't behind the counter. And that's a fact that actually has a little bit of irony to it. I think I was the only kid in high school that didn't work here. So I guess to make up for lost time, I just bought it. <laughs> It's like Norm on Cheers. Everybody knows your name. You want to you wanna come in, just uh, you if it's for a few minutes. If I'm going out on a road call or something like that, I'll stop in and have a, a quick breakfast because he makes it like that, and a cup of coffee and on the road. A lot of people will come together and get talk about what, what's going on and just enjoy yourself for the time. From local sporting events to local other theater plays and all that stuff, we want to keep the community vibe still alive. It's it's like a second home in a way. You know, I have to come in here, relax, talk to people when I want to. They talk to me, read a book, eat my eat good food. Uh, you know, it's just like being at home. Road trips like the one we're taking to Turner's Falls this evening are a lot of fun. And if you prefer to hit the open road on two wheels instead of four, head on over to our website for a digital extra as we take you to visit Nova Motorcycles, who will make you the custom bike of your dreams right here in Turner's Falls. My designs are always based on simplicity, making the most complicated parts of the motorcycle as simple as possible. You can find that story and so much more online right now at nepm.org slash connecting point. The village of Turner's Falls in the town of Montague has gone through a renaissance over the past several years, transforming from a town of industry to a hub of art, culture, and unique businesses. Helping to shepherd this change has been River Culture, a partnership of leaders from the arts and business communities, which is committed to promoting and strengthening cultural life in the village. I spoke with Suzanne Lomanto, the director of River Culture, to find out more about the past, present, and future of creativity and culture in Turner's. Suzanne, River Culture started in 2006. Tell me a little bit about why that was important to have this organization and what do you guys do? So uh, River Culture was founded in 2006 with a grant from the Mass Cultural Council. It was called an Adams Grant. And uh, the Mass Cultural Council set up the grant because they were looking for communities like Turner's Falls where the creative economy could take foothold. And then that program was sunsetted in 2017. And at that point, the town of Montague voted to put River Culture as a permanent part of Town Hall. I run the River Culture program, and my job is to um, work on the creative economy, but the uh, mission of River Culture is specifically to enhance quality of life, the people that live here, to foster the creative economy, and to create an environment that attracts new businesses, creative entrepreneurs, uh, visitors, and uh, residents to the town of Montague. So Turner's Falls is one of the five villages that makes up the town of Montague. How do you partner with the other villages and their cultural institutions and organizations? The town of Montague isn't a big place. Turner's Falls is very small, but Montague is a town of 8,000 people. So we have to work together. I think one of the things that River Culture does very well is just the fact that there is this position. There is a central person, me, if you have questions, if you need partners, if you need resources, uh, people in town know that I'm the person to go and speak with. When I visit a new town or village or city, one of my favorite things to do is check out the food scene. So tell me a little bit about what the village of Turner's Falls has to offer. 
the restaurant scene is very good. Um, I think not only the restaurant scene, but the brewery scene. We have a number of microbrews um, in town as well. I think what's really interesting is because we're in Franklin County, we're so close to all these farms. So most of the stuff is super local, super fresh, and generally organic. And it's a great place to come and do, a, to get a meal, to go down to Unity Park, to do some shopping. You mentioned um, the unique businesses that are in Turner's Falls, and it is really a fun dining and shopping experience. What makes this place the ideal location to start a business, and what can visitors expect when they come? I think what's unique about the business community in Turner's Falls is the number of businesses that identify with the upcycling movement and prioritize things that are handmade, locally sourced, or ethically sourced. And that's why we have shops like Loot, and that's why we have shops like Buckingham Rabbit's Vintage, and Breakdown Records, and Fab Fashion. They're um, stores that prioritize things that are handmade and things that are unique. It, Turner's Falls is strictly a one-of-a-kind shopping experience. Everything here is unique in and of itself. What is your favorite part about your position and the town of Montague and the village of Turner's Falls? My favorite thing about Turner's Falls um, is that how hard it is that we work. We work really hard. There's a wonderful sculpture down the street called Rock, Paper, Scissors. And if you look at the plaque on the side of the seating area, it says that it's the little, the little village that could. Mm -hmm. And that really is us. We don't give up. We don't give up. We just keep meeting and talking and thinking about the next step. Um, the last two years have been hard on everybody, that's for sure. But we are going to come out this spring and we're going to do it. That does it for Connecting Point from Turner's Falls. Remember, you can always find the stories that you saw tonight, as well as exclusive features, digital-only content, and more online anytime at nepm.org slash connecting point. And please be sure to join us again every week right here for more stories of the creativity, culture, and community that make us Western New England. I'm Saidalis Bauer. Our thanks to the village of Turner's Falls and the town of Montague for hosting us this evening. Thanks for watching and have a good night. Support for Connecting Point is provided by our contributing viewers. identity begins when Benjamin Franklin knit the American colonies together. Franklin is endlessly interesting. Printer, scientist, revolutionary. He is the only founding father who evidently had a sense of humor. His vision is broader than the American Revolution. The things that he spoke of, that he wrote about, had a certain amount of power. He really was an American genius. Watch Benjamin Franklin Monday at 8 or stream at nepm.org. Desperate to escape the childhood trauma that's haunted him for years comes a story of reflection, resilience, and release. Starring Will Liverman, Angel Blue, and LaTanya Moore. See the Met Make History with Terrence Blanchard's adaptation of Charles M. Blow's memoir, Fire Shut Up in My Bones. On great performances at the Met. Watch Friday night at 9 or stream at nepm.org. PBS Kids has helped me as a teacher in countless ways. I use Nature Cat in my classroom, and there's an amazing episode about butterflies. So the kids got to watch the caterpillars change and watch Nature Cat clips about that. Tally ho! His tally ho became a rally cry. <laughs> PBS Kids helps my students learn more about the world around them.
We'll do arts and entertainment for 30. 61 seasons of local high school wit. Tentasqua. Nine. Nine, yes, you're right. As schools match wits, pits area high schools yes. against each other in a fun, yes. competitive quiz show. Wakona. The summer solstice. Yes. Watch your favorite weekly quiz show Saturday night at 7 or stream it at NEPM.org. This week, Wakona Regional takes on Tantasqua Regional on As Schools Match Wits. Looking for a good book to escape into? How about Matrix by Amherst College grad Lauren Groff? It's an astonishing tale about 12th century poet and mystic Marie de France, who leads an impoverished nunnery into prosperity. I'm Erin O'Neill, host of the NEPM Book Club, and we'll tackle Matrix at our next virtual meeting on April 26th at 7 p.m. Sign up at nepm.org slash book club. You're watching New England Public Media, WGBY Springfield. So like right now, the senior class is stressing over college apps. Please begin. I would love UC Berkeley. Harvard, Stanford, Columbia. I guess you're just looking at like the cream of the crop right here. I work hard and I strive to be a nerd. The pressure is insurmountable at times. Oh my God! It's the best. <laughs> Watch Try Harder May 2nd or stream